He's still in the seat. Solo confinement matches. <laughs> All right. It's 125. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, thank block. you. This one and a previous one we had? Yeah, it was Jackie. Oh, she was. She was. She was oh, okay. Number 21 through May. Excuse me. 21 through there. She was the hmm. resource director and she was. Oh, I thought you were just talking about She was a project Bolton. manager for Bolton and Mink. Mm -hmm. Holly was. Previously. I see that. <laughs> wow. It's impressive. Hmm. Interesting. So we got this. All right. I don't get this in depth with my interviews. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Asking a few simple questions. And well, as we said at lunch, maybe the normal in the first five minutes. Pretty much, you can't you can't tell everything in the book, mm -hmm. but you can get it pretty much just on the cover. What you your first three questions, pretty much. And I find myself with if somebody sits down. I pretty much have my mind made up on the person pretty fast. Yeah. I think that's a it's a, it's a crazy deal, but first impressions are first impressions. They call them a reason. Yeah, they call them that for a reason. Yeah, they call them for a reason, absolutely. Oh. <coughs> hello. She's here. Hi there. Hello, oh, hello. It's nice and cool in here. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing cold no, I like here. it. I like it. <laughs> Some of us are warm-blooded. Some of you are younger, with <laughs> thicker skin. Yeah, our Kelsey <laughs> Zolex is not here. It's always cold. Always cold. Always cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like I'm always hot, so we're, this is good. And then when I get nervous, I get even more warm. Well, Holly, thank you for coming. We're very excited to have you uh, as an applicant for uh, the City of Morris City Manager position. And what we'd like to do is uh, go through a set of, we've got about 19 questions. And the last question is one that we want to give you an opportunity to ask the council members any questions that you may have. So I will go ahead and read the questions so that the council members can take diligent notes on your awesome responses, and uh, we will go from there. So, okay, no pressure. <laughs> to start out, Holly, please tell us what interests you about the Morris City Manager position and highlight key qualifications that make you the best candidate for the position. Sure. So, what interested me, um, if I'm being quite frank, is the location to Furs Falls. It's close to where I'm at right now. Um, and, you know, as you can see from my resume, I've kind of been back and forth between private and public, but the majority of my time has been in public, so I, I do have a passion for public or government work, um, and 
so that was very intriguing to me. When we first moved, there wasn't really anything out there as far as government work. Um, so I was very excited to see that something had come up where it wouldn't require, you know, too much relocation or getting my family out, of, out too much. Um, so that was intriguing to me. Um, and even more so now today with the tour, um, I learned a lot on the tour. Nice job. Thank you. Um, there's a lot in Morris to offer than I actually realized initially. So that's exciting. There's, there's a lot going on. I think there's a lot more that can go on. So that was very enlightening. So I appreciate that. Um, my strengths, again, I think it's my background and my breadth of experience, um, you know, from engineering and public works to HR to administration, both city and county. So I think I have a good wide variety of experience. Um, as an engineer, some may or may not think that's applicable, but really in, in the engineering world, it's a lot about project management and managing budgets and managing people and managing schedules. And I think that correlates to being a city manager and the fact that you have to be able to manage a lot of different things at one time um, and keep things moving forward. Um, so I think that's a, a big plus for me. Um, and then also, you know, working with the county government um, as an administrator, I think that's a, a strength because you know, I have experienced it from both sides. Counties working with cities, cities working with counties and how that collaboration works. Um, I worked with, as being in county, I worked with a lot of different communities who had different needs and different ideas. And so that kind of helps understand all the different, how to kind of piece through all the community needs, things like that. And then also Pine City is similar in size. When I was the administrator there, it's similar in size to Morris um, with, you know, a lot of things to manage at once. And so I think that's a strength too, just knowing how to manage a lot of different things and a lot of different people and personalities. And so. The majority of Minnesota cities are statutory cities. However, the city of Morris is a charter city. Mm -hmm. Please share your knowledge of the difference between the two types. Um, so I've worked in both. Uh, the city of Wilmer was a charter city, um, so when I was there, I, you know, I was the public works director and we, you know, I went to all the city council meetings, so I did experience them updating their charter and, and things like that. So what I know about the difference between the two, that's the only city I worked in that was a charter city. Um, uh, the difference between the two is, you know, you kind of can sort of make, not make up, but implement some of your own rules, per se, or ideas of what you want to do. Um, there aren't that many uh, charter cities, I believe, in the state, so um, it's a unique um, position to be in. Um, I don't see that being a hurdle at all. I think that's just how you operate, and it, you, you can adapt to that, and I have no issue with that. So um, I've done a little bit within a charter city mostly within a statutory city, so that's, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, please describe your management style and how that facilitates teamwork amongst the council, staff, and contracted employees. Yeah, so I would describe my management style as collaborative. Um, I have always worked under the philosophy that cities and counties and um, hire staff with expertise and you should rely on that staff for their expertise. So that's why I say collaborative. So for example, um, some folks in my past have thought, well, she's, she's a public works expert, so she's gonna step over the toes of all of our public works folks or our public works director. That's not the case. Um, I value those people that work directly in their area of expertise. And I value their opinions. They're out there doing the work, they're out there seeing the issues, they're out there seeing you know, the challenges, and so I value that. So when I say collaborative, I wanna hear from the department heads and the departments about what they're struggling with, what they're doing. Um, I also have, a, I would like to say that I'm approachable. I want people to come to me, ask questions. Why did you make the decision that you made? What is the reason for that? And to my best of my ability, I will always um, provide 
the reason behind the decisions that are being made, whether it's a council decision, whether it's a policy, an ordinance, something like that, whether it's input from the departments. However, I'm always going to try to justify the decisions that are being made, and I'm going to make decisions that are following policies. Um, so I would say I'm open door, um, approachable. People can ask me questions. Um, like I said, collaborative. Um, and I would also say I really like to communicate with people. So I've given this example on the other two panels too, with the city council, for example. If an agenda comes out um, and there's something on there you have a, a question about or you're concerned about, I would rather have a council member come in and ask me before the meeting so that I can gather the information and provide um, the answer or additional information to the full council at the council meeting rather than being caught off guard. And I would want the department heads and the departments to do the same. Um, so teamwork wise, I think it goes both ways. If you're showing um, respect, leading by example, I think your staff is gonna show respect back um, and see that we're all kind of fighting for the same goal. We're all working towards the same goal. So I think that establishes teamwork too. Honesty, integrity, follow through, all of that establishes um, good teamwork and camaraderie amongst all of those within the city and even in the community as well. What experience do you have working with union employees and collective bargaining agreements? A bunch. <laughs> um, I will just, I say that because, uh, so let me start with when I was the public works director in Wilmer, of course I had the unions um, that I was supervising, so the public works union, Local 49, they were in a union, so I supervised them, so that's my experience um, supervising union folks, much like the other positions that I had, but also when I worked in HR um, for several years, um, that was one of my jobs, was to negotiate union contracts with the union employees and to, as HR, to interpret those union contracts when there was a grievance or a concern or a complaint. Um, Mille Lacs County had, I believe, nine unions, if I'm remembering correctly, um, and we went through the decertification of one, and then we added an additional one. So I've been through the negotiations, the decertification, and adding a new union, all of those step, all of those different pieces with the union. Um, Oakdale, I believe we had five unions. I was part of those negotiations. We also went through a class and comp study um, and to implement uh, the new pay scales with those unions and having that communication with them. Um, so lots of experience there. Um, Dealt with a lot of grievances. Um, Pine City, we had maybe three unions, I can't remember, but as the sole, I mean, Pine City didn't have a huge staff, so um, negotiated all those. We had a liquor store, actually had a union, we had a public works union, um, worked with the uh, police union at Oakdale, we had a union with the police department. Um, we had our office staff union at Mille Lacs County. We had a facilities union staff at Mille Lacs County. Um, we had Health and Human Resources was in the union. So lots of different kinds of unions, lots of different different gamuts, I guess. So that's why I say I have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly do. Wow, nine unions at Mille Lacs County. Huh? Yeah, it was a lot. And some of the unions didn't have very many people in them. You know, wow. like, Three, four. So it's just still treating the same. Still takes the same amount of work to negotiate a contract, whether you have fifty union members or four. So, yeah. Holly, describe how you believe the relationship between the city manager and the council should function. Well, I mean, obviously, the the council's kind of the boss, so I have to follow the direction of the city council. Um, within you know the law right i'm not going to do anything unethical <laughs> um but i think that it's a two-way street i think that open communication is important um i want to be able to have a comfortable relationship where we can speak candidly with one another but respectfully i want to be also be able to agree to disagree once the city council makes a decision that's the decision that's been made and it needs to be carried out i don't want myself 
or staff to go back and say, oh, can you believe what the city council did last night? I can't believe that was such a blah, 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 right? I want to be able to support the decisions of the city council because if they staff sees that, the community sees that, they're going to get on board and they're going to understand why the decisions are being made. So I think it's a, a two-way street. Um, I want the city council to be comfortable coming to me with questions, concerns, issues, thoughts, and I want to be able to be comfortable to go to them as well um, as, with concerns, questions, thoughts. Um, I always have said one of my key things is I don't want to ever be caught by surprise, and I don't necessarily, I don't absolutely don't want the city council to be caught by surprise either. So. For example, if the department head knows of something, or if a complaint comes in, and or you know a citizen is complained and no one has told me about it, that catches everybody off guard, and then you're kind of flustered at a meeting or whatever. So I don't want anyone caught off guard. I want to provide as much information as possible. The more information you have, the more um, the easier it is to make a decision. Please describe your involvement in budgeting, finance, and short and long-term planning. A bunch, no. <laughs> 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 um, well, I have all kinds of different kinds of budgeting experience. Um, relative to city budgeting um, at the city of Pine City, that was, we had myself and then we had one finance person. So her and I were the ones who put together the city budget um, every year. How we did that, um, I relied heavily on the staff. So we would send, I would send out a memo to the staff, here's your budget, please update your budget, what you think you need for the next year, tell me why you're increasing it or why you're decreasing it so that I can understand what the purpose of that is and then bring it back, you know, I reviewed it, determined what maybe I thought could be cut or not cut, trying to meet the council's desires as far as what a levy increase would be. Um, and then go back to the staff and say, here's what I'm thinking. How does that affect your operations? You know, you have to, again, you have to have that communication. So that's how we did it, um, how I kind of approached it in Pine City. Um, in Wilmer, I had a fairly big budget in the Public Works Department because um, I was handling um, a wastewater, water and wastewater airports, facilities, um, public works and engineering, so those five departments. So I had a fairly large budget to help put together for that and present to the administrator there. Um, so I guess that's my experience there is putting together a budget and then making sure, you know, we're within budget I had to approve all the bills and things like that um, as the public works director. Um, Lacks County, same thing, you know, the administrator and I uh, were responsible for putting together the budget with the finance director. I was involved in the whole process he didn't do it alone. I mean, he, I was in a pretty much every meeting when we were putting together the budget. Same kind of process. Department then put your budget together, tell us what and why, and then communicate that back and forth. Um, the other piece of budget I just want to mention is as an engineer, public works director, or project manager, whatever you want to call it, um, put together budgets for projects all the time. Um, and we have to stay within that budget because we tell the client, you know, this is the budget for your project, this is how much it's going to cost you, and if um, the project management side, if I'm not managing that budget, the company's losing money. So um, I have to manage those budgets as well. And then another example, I guess, would be um, from the engineering side is um, when I took over at um, Wilmer as the public works director, it was kind of mid-project. We were in the middle of building a new water wastewater plant. And it was, we had a consultant on board. It was an $80 million project. Um, and so, um, Again, mid-project, and I, I like to take pride in the fact that we finished that project on time and within budget, even during that transition period. So that, again, is an example of just making sure we're within budget with a consultant, um, with the city, with the staff, all of that, so. Holly, what have you previously done to educate new members about the finances and keep members apprised of changes within the budget? Um, educate new members of the council, you mean, or? Correct, okay. yes. Well, again, I think it's just a matter of detail, um, is providing as much information as possible. For, you know, I'll go back to Pine City, when I asked the department heads to put together, like, a memo that says, 
this is what I need, this is why, or this is what I'm cutting, providing that information to the council. So there's no reason the council can't see that. Um, I mean, it's public information. This is what we need for our budget. Um, so I think also just sitting down with the council member, um, this is this is the budget. Here's why we came up with the numbers. I would definitely, definitely bring in the finance director because that's their expertise. So they need to be involved, obviously. I mean, I'm going to rely heav heavily on them um, to make sure that we're within our means and we're meeting the council's um, goals. So I think the best way to educate a new member is to sit down with them if they choose and to provide as much information as possible and be open to questions. It's important for the city manager to be organized. What do you do to keep yourself organized on various projects and make sure that you're not missing any deadlines? Well, um, I typically have a lot going on, so <laughs> um, I rely heavily on my calendar, um, whether it's a Google Calendar, um, Outlook Calendar. I live and die by my calendar, um, so and the tasks within the calendar. So that's primarily how I'm going to stay um, on top of things. Um, I also uh, have used in the past, especially when I was the HR director, a whiteboard, simple whiteboard, like. This is the position we're hiring for. This is when the applications are due. This is when we need to do interviews. Simple, right? But it kept me organized. So, um, you know, I hate to say it, but sometimes sticky notes are a part of that. Um, you know, sometimes you lose them, but I do rely heavily on my calendar and the tasks within Outlook. Sometimes a whiteboard too. Because <laughs> you can see it right there. Yeah. <laughs> So it sounds like you're very familiar with some of the deadlines that we need to meet annually through the budgeting process or reports in for <coughs> various things? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, there, I mean, I know when we're putting together a budget, there's timelines as far as submitting the preliminary budget, timelines for submitting the levy, timelines for submitting the final budget. Um, September through December, those timelines typically fall. We want to start the budgeting process probably, if I'm the selected candidate, right away, because we need to get that moving. Um, so yes, familiar with that. I deal with deadlines all the time. Um, for example, submitting grant applications or submitting funding requests to rural development. That's what I work with a lot right now. There's timelines for that. There's timelines for PFA. and So yeah, I, I deal with deadlines and timelines all the time. I work very well under pressure and meeting deadlines, so deadlines are great for me. I like deadlines. So generally, our department heads take part in the annual budgets, and Absolutely. our outgoing city manager has pretty much agreed to help us out and to submit his proposal, so you'd have no problem looking at some things from previous that i got to be my way, or oh, we're willing oh to gosh, look at and absolutely. work with. I would love that. Well, <laughs> I, just, I would think it would be very helpful for us, whoever comes that. in as our new <laughs> city manager, to have those tools at their hands on what they've done from previous budgets to give you a little bit of a, or whoever our next city manager is, but just seeing that you're agreeable and working with computers in today's world, it's the information that's there and to using what we have for the available information. Yeah, I mean, just to elaborate, you know, when I was putting together budgets, I, I can use, I do use technology, Excel, all of that stuff. I'm also a paper person. I do like to see it right in front of me, but um, when I would put together budgets for Pine City, Public Works, whatever, always printed the previous maybe two or three years to see what that trend is. Are we over budgeting? Are we under budgeting? Um, even like for this year, we're six months in, how are we doing? Are we 50%? Are we 80%? Where are we at as far as budget goes? Um, but absolutely, department heads need to be 100% involved um, because they're the ones who know, who know what they need, what they're spending. Having the city manager, previous city manager come in and help with anything would be greatly appreciated because my understanding he's got tons of knowledge knowledge that he probably doesn't even know he has that he can pass on to the new person in the position so i think in hearing that he would be willing to do that and help with that that's fantastic thank Love you that. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Holly, describe a time when you made a mistake at work. 
how did you deal with this situation and what was the outcome? Hmm. A mistake. Well, I guess, I mean, we all, I'm sure I've made many because we all make mistakes. Uh, I would, I wouldn't just, oh, okay. So as HR, um, we had a individual who applied for unemployment and the city decided to fight that. Um, not, not, not my decision, but I was following the direction I was given. Like the city decided to fight that unemployment claim. Um, so there was an appeal process that needed to be submitted. Um, and I missed that, send in that. There was, we appealed it, but then there was another step after the appeal to submit that and I missed that. And I took ownership of that. I'm like, yep, I missed that, you know, whatever. Um, not whatever, but yes, I missed it. I'm accountable for it. We'll make it work. Um, it ended up then, the state ended up denying the claim anyway. So it didn't hurt anything that I missed that. I mean, I got lucky, right? The state declined it anyway. We ended up going into a hearing. Um, the individual fought it, and we went into going up to a hearing. Um, the city prevailed. So it wasn't a detrimental mistake, but it was still a mistake and one that I will never, that you learn from. I learned from that. Like, let's make sure that we are following all of the steps. I hadn't done that many appeals. Um, I'm not gonna make excuses. Just hadn't done that many. I was busy, so it just happened. Um, but I took ownership of it. I'm like, yeah, I did miss that. And how can we solve that issue? And so it, it turned out okay. Um, so, yeah. Not one I'm happy about, but it is what it is. You just learn. Learn from your mistakes. And I would treat any other employee that made a mistake the same way. I mean, I expect people are going to make mistakes. And if someone comes to me and says, hey, I made the mistake, okay, how can we fix it? How can we resolve it? What do we need to do to move forward? What, I mean, so why did you miss it? How can we help you so you don't make that same mistake again? So I would treat my employees. Holly, how will you work with the EDA and help the community to grow and prosper? So again, working with the EDA, I did a little bit of that when I was in Pine City. I was on the EDA as the city administrator at the time, so I'm familiar with it. I haven't worked with an EDA for a while. Um, also, I guess at Wright County, even though I was there a short time, I was involved in the EDA uh, meetings there. Um, I think my best approach would be to get to know the EDA director very well um, and to kind of um, throw myself into that to learn more about it and to hear from the community and from the council what is it that you need, um, what are you looking for. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here, I can see that. There's a lot of opportunity to increase the tax base, a lot of opportunity for development, new businesses. But I definitely, again, rely on the expertise of the EDA director, so I would need to become close with her and learn about all the things that she's doing. And then ask her, like, what do you need from the city? What can I do to help? And then put our heads together as, as the time goes on. I'll learn more and more, and then put our heads together and figure out the best approach moving forward. I'm not an expertise in EDA, economic development, I'm not. So I would, I would very much rely on that and learning and growing with that position. <clears throat> what is your experience researching, applying for, and managing grants? So um, right now, uh, managing <coughs> grants and, and funding um, opportunities daily at where I currently am, because that's how small communities fund their projects, smaller than a thousand people. Um, so uh, I do work closely. I have some good contacts with rural development. Um, I have worked with the League of Minnesota Cities on things. Um, we had a grant writer at Mille Lacs County, so I didn't do a lot of grant writing, but I did a lot of um, providing information on how to write those grants or the information that they needed for those grants. I did apply for a couple of, uh, as a 
because I was the county engineer also in Lenox County. Um, so I applied for some local road and research, local road improvement funds um, through a grant process. Um, so I have applied for some. Um, the best management of grants or funding, you know, would be a good example with the COVID money that all communities got um, in the county got. We had a significant amount of money at the county. Um, so we had to figure out how to manage that money and do the reporting for that and make sure those timelines were met. Um, my role was ensuring that those timelines are met. Hey, finance director, did you get this report submitted? Hey, finance director, did you get, just following up. Um, because again, like one person shouldn't have to do all the work, right? So we have to work together and um, just keeping people accountable and following <coughs> up and providing help where needed. Um, so that was, that's probably a good example of managing funds that we've already gotten. Uh, working at the city of Wilmer, we got, you know, funds from MnDOT every year for our road projects. Um, and so we had to, I had to manage that. Um, also at the airport, there's a lot of grants at the airport that I dealt with and closing out grants at the airport because we had done it. There was a, a big improvement project, an expansion project, and the airport manager left. So I had this huge disaster of what now? Like there is un, un open ended things, things that didn't get cleaned up, things that didn't get done. And the FAA was telling me, well, you owe us this money. I'm like, no, I think that grant was closed out or this loan was closed out. And we're saying, FAA, you still owe us money. So I had to clean that whole mess up. Um, not really fun for a grant. How I kind of got involved in that kind of thing. So that was an interesting. That was an interesting project. <laughs> <laughs> Describe your current local government network, or the steps that you would take to develop a network of local government <laughs> professionals that you can share ideas with and get advice. Well, I think I have a pretty good um, network. Um, probably not necessarily local, um, because I've just moved over to this area, but, um, you know, City of Wilmer, I left on good terms there. I have, uh, you know, people that I worked with there, a lot of them have left, but I can certainly reach out, um, to the previous, the, actually the previous public works director is now the county engineer in Kendu High County, and I still could keep contact with him. I don't remember if I left him on my resume or not as a reference, but, um, and then, you know, other administrators, as part of my role now, I do follow where administrators are going um, and who's going where um, and keeping in contact with them. Um, every community that I've left, I've left on good terms, so I have good resources from them, from not just administration, but other departments as well, from communications to finance to public works to engineers to you know, other administrators, assistant administrators, city clerks. So um, I feel like I have a pretty good network. As you can see, I've kind of been around a little bit. So um, I know quite a few people. Um, sometimes, you know, you get a little timid as far as calling up somebody and saying, hey, remember me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I want, I need some help. But in my role now, I kind of have to do that. I mean, to, to get work, right? I have to go to communities and say, hey, remember me? <laughs> I work here now. Do you need anything engineering-wise? So that's a skill that I'm still continually developing is reconnecting with people. I mean, I have my close network, but reconnecting with other people that I you know, maybe have lost contact with or whatever. So, um, But yeah, I think I have no concerns about that. I think the League of Minnesota Cities is a huge resource also. I've used them a lot in the past. Um, so I think they're also a really good resource for City managers and Holly, describe your experience working with other units of government to develop service partnerships. A bunch. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few bunches here. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, again, so as an engineer, I worked a lot with MnDOT, different counties, the FAA. Um, uh, lots of people. Uh, then, as administrator, I've worked with uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, other cities, school districts, um, 
other counties again, you know, now currently I'm working with rural development, PFA, MPCA. So probably you name it, I've probably worked with them. DNR, um, even that couple of tribes we've worked with because Mille Lacs County is in the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe um, area. So we've worked with some of the tribes up there um, with projects and historical artifacts and things when we did things up there. The Historical Society, so all different kinds of government agencies. Probably you name it, I've done it. <laughs> I think the engineering world, it really kind of elevates that because when you ever do, you, you do a major project, you kind of touch a lot of pieces, so. Describe how you would become involved in the Morris community. Yeah, that's a good question since I'm not a Morris resident or a Morris native. No. Um, so I think my goal would be in the beginning to try and make myself visible as much as possible within the community. I will add, and I'm not supposed to say this as HR, but my son is going to go to Morris for college next year. So that gives me even more of an excuse to be involved in the community um, and be active, because then I can see him. Um, <laughs> but I think in the beginning especially, um, making myself visible. Um, I don't, my children are all grown. Um, they're pretty independent. I have one that's at home, but he's never there. So, I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot holding me back, per se. The family piece of it is more lax than normal, I guess. My husband works nonstop, so I have a lot of time on my hands, let's just say. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I think I said in one of the other committees, you know, attending the planning commission meeting, whether it's required or not, might be useful to get to know people who are involved in the community, get to know the planning commission, what their thoughts and goals are, attending the library board meeting, just to understand what perhaps is happening at the library, and maybe there's different community members that show up there. If there's major community events, you know, showing up there where I can be visible to the public, etc. Um, so that would be one way. Meeting with your players within the community, you know, the, the, the university folks, um, the school district folks, some of the business folks, those that are pretty influential within the community, that would be a one way to be visible. I also mentioned at one of the other sessions was, I have seen in the past where a manager and administrator has put like an article, a short article in the local newspaper, just, hey, this is what's happening in Morris right now. Not every week, but maybe, you know, once in a while, just to kind of keep community members um, in the know. And then maybe that would give them more of a, a feeling of, hey, I have this question. I, I feel like the city manager might be able to answer that or is able to help me with that. The other thing I did mention was um, maybe enhancing the, the website a little bit um, to provide information on there and making the city manager and the role visible there so that community, I can, you know, the community can see that and then see that, you know, there's work being done and here's the city manager's information. I know the city manager's information is on there now, but just enhancing that a little bit and making it a little bit more flashy. So they'll actually be spying on your son? Is that what? Uh... Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, please, please do. We won't tell him that that's the, <laughs> the game plan. I, I intentionally didn't tell him where I was going for an interview today because I didn't want to scare him. <laughs> Watching you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. He's a mama's boy. He'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, describe a, describe a situation that you feel demonstrates your integrity and ethic ethical standards. Sure. I'm going to use the same example I used at the other committee because they think they asked the same question. Um, so I was, as an HR, I was put in a very interesting situation. I was investigating, or we got a complaint about a sexual harassment case. And so I, as the HR, had to lead that process. Um, I did not do the investigation. We hired out an, a labor investigator to do that because it was a pretty, I would say, high profile type sexual harassment case. Um, and so I went through that process. And I think I will say that um, showed my integrity 
because going through that, because I, I actually got along well with the person who was um, being investigated. So it was, it was a little bit of an interesting situation. It was very complicated and hard to deal with all on your own. Like there was a lot of stress happening, right? And you can't talk to anybody about it. You can't talk to my husband, you can't talk to any other staff person. So I think just keeping that close and um, private shows integrity um, because nobody really knew at the time why this individual was investigated or why they left, per se. So I think that shows a lot of integrity. Um, honesty, you know, I just feel like, I, I kind of just feel like the information that I provide pro shows some honesty because this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I think that shows both integrity and honesty. One thing I've also, with my current role, delivering bad news to a city council is never fun, right? Yeah. The city council does not like to hear bad news. Um, but having that, providing that bad news to the council right away, rather than waiting, providing it right away, taking the heat, and then solving the problem, that shows, that, that just makes the problem go much easier. And I think that shows honesty. Hey, we have this issue going on, so we're behind schedule here. City Council, I know that doesn't make you happy, but this is why it's happening, and this is how we're gonna get through it. I think that shows honesty. Um, it's hard to say that it's bad news, but it has to be said. Transparency is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Only gets worse if you don't know about it. What is your experience managing staff? Please share a situation where you had to address employee performance issues, how you went about it, and what the outcome was. Well, I've addressed several employee mm -hmm. performance issues in my career. Um, both as HR director and as a park department head. And I think, so, I'm trying to give, think of a specific example. Um, besides the sexual harassment one, of course. Um, so I had another um, interesting situation where the staff had come to me and was complaining about their department head. and complaining about how he was running his department um, and just how he was talking to them, his demeanor. Um, so what I had to do is you bring the, I brought the individual in. I said, you know, you can't tell them who the complaints are coming from, of course. I brought the individual in and I said, I'm hearing this, this, and this. How do you feel about that? What do you think? Do you, do you see it the same way? Um, and kind of just listening to their reaction and their response. And then giving them an opportunity to maybe correct that behavior. Um, but I think part of that is, this is what you need to do to correct, correct that behavior. Let me see progress here. So we call that a progress report, right? So you write, you have to have goals and timelines of when this individual should be meeting these specific timelines, right? You have, you know, for example, um, if someone, I kind of switched examples, but if someone wasn't putting their reports together on time and correctly, you need to submit your reports um, on time for the next three months, and it needs to be correct. There shouldn't be any corrections. Then you go back and you meet with them again and see if that's improving. Back to the example of the department head that was struggling. Um, you know, again, listening to them. What's the issue? What do you need? How can we solve this? And just kind of working through it that way. Sometimes. The decision is tough, you know. Um, this isn't working out. You're not meeting the expectations of the county, the city, whatever. You're not meeting our expectations. Here's your opportunity to either put in your resignation or we're going to have to let you go. Those are tough conversations because I do generate kind of, you know, a relationship with folks when you're there. And those are tough conversations to have, but they have to be had. This individual actually um, was let go. Still talk to him. I talked to him after he left, you know, tried to figure out what he was doing. So, I mean, it was cordial, right? Mm -hmm. So it just is all about the delivery. It's all about the delivery you have with that individual. Some places just aren't right for other people. Maybe the position.
situation isn't right for them. So you have to have those tough conversations. They're not fun. I dread them, but you have to do them. Please share a time when you had to deal with a disgruntled resident and what you did to solve the issue. Um, so we had a disgruntled resident in Pine, well, many, but one example in, <laughs> in Pine City. Um, they were upset because they're, they had had a new road construction and they weren't happy with the engineer that did the road construction and they were getting water in their yard and they didn't like the curb. So basically what I did at the time, because I was the administrator and not the engineer on this project, um, you know, I made the effort, I went out and met with the individual, I looked at their property, um, just because it was a small town, right? You have to kind of cater mm -hmm. to some of those folks. Went and met with, on the property, I looked at their issue, I brought the engineer in, I had them come look at the issue, um, just kind of talk through it with them. Minor, you know, grading issue it ended up being, so we did a little bit of work in their yard and they were happy. I think they just really just wanted to be heard. Um, so, you know, that was pretty simple. Mille Lacs County, same thing. When I was the county engineer, I had a resident complain about, we did some ditch cleaning and they cleaned the ditch too wide. They made it too wide. So they had come to the council and were complaining and the council member was telling me, well, they did it wrong. And they're like, no, they didn't do it wrong, but we'll go look at it, right? So we I put on my, we went out to the property, met with the property owner, heard their issue, heard their complaint, looked at the plans, you know, kind of just to verify, provide information so we can justify what we did and why we did it. Ended up, the city council, you know, we brought forward the information. The city council decided to fund a fence for them because they had they claimed that the fence was damaged during the project. Sometimes you have to, as you know, you have to make those tough decisions. Would you rather pay for a $4,000 fence or would you rather litigate for $30,000? You know, you kind of have to balance that line. So I think a lot of times you just have to deal with them and listen to them. Most of the time, they just want to be heard. They just want to yell at you for a few minutes and then they're fine. I can handle that. <laughs> We're almost down to the last question, Holly, but why should the Morris City Council select you for their next city manager? Um, I would say, I mean, I, th I think you have good candidates, I'm not going to lie. I do know one of them, actually. but. Why should you select me is I think I have a good breadth of experience that I can bring. I think that I've worked in a lot of different areas, a lot of different communities, um, even a lot of different areas of the state. So I've seen a lot of things. I've had a lot of different experiences. I've been on, um, I was on a uh, transportation committee. I was on a coalition board. Um, I've been on EDA. So I've been involved in the communities that I've worked in. Um, so I think probably what sets me apart is the, the breadth of my experience, um, just because I've had so many different things from public works to engineering to HR to administration, from city to county to private, all of that whole gamut, um, which I don't think you usually find in a candidate for a city manager. So it's a unique combination that I have. And you know, like I said, I'm, I'm passionate about com about about government work. Um, I just hope that you don't uh, look at my resume and think I'm just a, gonna jump ship everywhere. Um, there's always a reason why someone does something. And there's, all, there's a reason behind everything that I have on there, so. Could you elaborate for us on your jump ship? Yeah, absolutely. You want me to start at the beginning? Well, uh, just uh, <laughs> try to, we're gonna try to wrap this up here in the next 10 minutes, but just, uh, and yeah, we all have, some story and just a yeah a broaden okay, looking to, through it's yeah no I know I a half know. year a year I mean, just yes, curiosity I wise and okay so I'm gonna start at Wilmer um, so Wilmer it was a great job I loved it my husband got a job over in the Pine City area he got a principal job in Hinkley so that's why we moved that's why I moved to Pine City got the administrator job in Pine City 
Um, that was a good job too. The council liked me. They had just actually approved a raise for me and then I resigned. Um, to say honestly, uh, it became a little bit concerning. I had very young kids at that time and I had some really, really scary residents. And so my family was very routine. We weren't usually home that often, but everybody knew where we lived. My kids were little, I got concerned about them, really. Um, so small town stuff happening, you know, just people know where you are, what you're doing, and kind of just made me nervous. So um, then I went to WSB, you know, I'm gonna be honest, getting an engineering job is kind of a piece of cake, really. I hate to say it that way, but the engineers are hard to find, and I have the experience, so it's easy to get a job in engineering. So um, that's why I went to WSB. Um, they had an opportunity where I could, their office was, my office was in St. Cloud, but I worked um, a couple days in North Branch, which was only 20 miles from my house. And so that was one of the reasons why I went there, because I wouldn't have to commute every single day over to St. Cloud. Um, and then what I learned at WSB, it wasn't a good fit for me. Their um, work culture was just not for me. It was very, hmm, I don't know the best way to describe it. It was a little bit maybe stuffy for me. That's probably the best way to describe it. Um, so I went to Bolton and Mink. I had friends there. Um, so I talked to one of the owners at a conference I was at. And they're like, how's it going? I'm like, oh, that's all right. Well, if you need a job, give me a call. So I called them, and they hired me. I mean, <laughs> so, so I took that job. Um, and that was, a, that was a good job, too. Um, but then uh, it was fine. I just got a, I kind of just got a little bit bored and decided, you know, I really don't like engineering. I want to go into, I want to use my degree, my master's degree in administration, because I hadn't really used it that much yet. So Mille Lacs County came up. The HR position came up. Um, and shockingly, they hired me because I didn't really have any HR background. I just had my public works background, but I was, you know, department head, so I had a little bit of HR there. So Lax County hired me as their HR um, uh, personnel director. Um, I knew the one of the interview panels from when I worked in Pine City. So when you ask about only local government people, that was just another, you know, kind of all about who you know sometimes, um, and. You know, like I said, I've left everything, every place I've been on a good note, so um, got good references. That was a great job, too. I really did like it there. Um, what happened there is I got assigned too many tasks. I was hired as a personnel director. Then I, they added the assistant county administrator job to my personnel director job. Then they added the public works director to my other two jobs. And then they added the county engineer to my other three jobs. So it got to be a lot. Like, there was a lot on my plate. So it was, it was exhausting <laughs> um, to do basically one person doing four jobs. It was just, it was just a lot. Um, but then the administrator left very suddenly, um, put his notice in on a Sunday, and Monday morning I was running the show. So I became the interim county administrator at that time. Um, Prior to his resignation, the county had been discussing county coordinator versus county administrator if they wanted to go back to a county coordinator position. Um, and when he left, the opportunity came up again for them to discuss that. I had decided that's not the role I want to be in. I don't want to be a county coordinator. I wanted to be a county administrator or a city administrator. So I chose to, to leave employment there. Again, on a good note, I think one of the commissioners is actually on my reference also. Um, but uh, then I went to Wright County um, as the assistant county administrator, if I'm being straight up and honest. I only lasted three months because I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> I was very bored there. Going from doing four jobs to doing one job was not very much to do. I was super bored. Um, when I left there, I talked to the uh, county administrator, Lee Kelly, there. And he asked me, he's like, well, you know, why? What can we do different? How can I improve? And I basically told him, I said, I think the next assistant you have come in, you need to have a, a clear definition of what their role is going to be. Um, and he took that at heart and he, you know, I know he, they made some changes after I left and hired differently. Um, so, left there on a good note too. And then, Oakdale. 
So Oakdale, I was hired as the HR director again, uh, left there because my husband got a job in Underwood as a superintendent. So he, you know, he's moving up in his role. So we kind of just, we're very motivated, ambitious people. So we like to improve our experience and our, so that's how I ended up over here. And so I took the job at Moore Engineering um, primarily because I was nervous about getting a job. Um, I needed a job. I wanted a job. I don't want to sit at home. Um, again, an engineering job is pretty easy to get. So they they hired me, and I have no issues with them. They're actually a really good company to work for. I enjoy the work. I, I enjoy the company and the people I work with, but it's not government. So that's my story. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know, Holly, there's no shame in reinventing yourself. <laughs> I mean, Just, you were saying that on the bus, and like, I have, that's right. I have been on that. I've been in that down that path. I reinvented myself many times too, and mm -hmm. I, it's it's a challenge more than anything. I think so. I commend you for that. It's not easy to. Sometimes it's easier just to stay with the status quo than make a jump. So mm -hmm. no, I respect that. Thank you. So, are there any questions that you have for the council members? Ask the same question of you that I asked the other panelists. So what are you? each looking for in a city manager? Mayor? I guess I will start. Uh, you know, again, uh, I think the number one thing for me is uh, more collaboration I, with uh, between the city government and just the community at large. I think we've had a, a situation that, you know, we, we've sort of uh, haven't been real engaging with, uh, with the public as well as we could. Um, and I think somebody that, uh, you know, brings, like yourself, brings a lot of, you know, diverse background to the, to the picture here. I mean, we, we have, uh, we have some development things that I guess I'd like to see, you know, we have some challenges with, uh, you know, community development and business development, as I shared, you know, we're out of, we're out of real estate and, you know, we need to, we have an aging population in Morris and I think we do have to address, you know, some taking a look at, you know, bringing some more opportunities to Morris. And mm -hmm. so that, that kind of the, kind of the main things that I'm, you know, that I'm looking for in a city manager, someone that's, you know, collaborative, communicates well. Um, so Thank you. that's it. Since I've jumped in right after him on all the previous, I'm looking for somebody, and I think most of us are, somebody that has the leadership skills to lead our community somebody that's here for us to work with for for our new city manager to to work with a council to be able to, to work back and forth and if we have our differences have our differences but when we shut the door on that meeting we keep moving forward we don't drag the baggage with us if if it's good or it's bad we every day is a new day so not if if we have it out on something you know we got to get to the bottom of it but put it behind us but also to be able to work with the public as you said People come in, their problem is the biggest problem they have that day, which is probably a problem, a pimple on your mm -hmm. tail feathers. It doesn't, but to hear them out and makes them feel happy, that's part of our job in public office. You know that you've worked around a lot of them. Looking for somebody that's gonna be involved in Morse. I mean, I find it hard for somebody to try to lead and all of us, if we wanna lead and make decisions for our community, we need to be involved with our community. People see us out and about on the community events and different things going on. And then some of our, our major projects we're working on, we've talked about our industrial park. We've talked about our East 7th Street project. It's a construction project. We've pushed back a year. If we're gonna do water and sewer with that or not, we. We've been putting it off for the last 15, 20 years, it seems like. And most of the people in that development all have their own wells and septic systems. We've talked about doing the improvements and it would affect about 112 properties going out and it got tabled this spring, a pushback another year. But we need to get some answers on that for our people. So we need to, to find the resources to help us get to the bottom of some of these things and make the decisions. It's the tough decisions, but that's why we get the big money to, to make these decisions and and to be able to, to be proud after we've made those decisions. So our new city manager's got to be able to help us to find the answers to these things. 
Yeah, he must so be. So you guys t- must make big money there. He must be easily <laughs> talking. Easily talking, talking about, about me <laughs> making big money on that council. Yeah. No, no when people when they ask us, oh, how much do you make a year? And it's when you tell them, they're like, that's it. Right. I said, yeah. It's it's not a passion of getting rich. It's because you care about your community. Yeah, so. For sure. I I think I'm looking for somebody that's going to uh, interact with the staff, but uh, um, manage the staff also. Um, you know, I think it's important for the city to uh, maintain its parks, maintain everything that the city, you know, the, the parks department, which obviously you were in charge of at one time. Uh, I, th- I like people to come to town and look and see, oh, boy, that parks department has really got this place trimmed up. This it really looks nice. It's that first impression when they come to town. If they come to town and the stuff's not mowed or it's not trimmed right, and, and they come in and go, hmm, yeah, okay. They just keep driving. I mean, and, and I'm also looking for somebody that can work with different businesses in town and the whole uh, try to work with fixing up our infra- not infrastructure, but the housing. We need housing for people to come. We have tons of jobs available. Uh, we, we don't have a lot of places for people to live. I, I think that that fix up the town, get that places for people to live and work on some of these projects. Like uh, when we went down the Six Streets project, you yeah. know, and, and if you would have seen the before and then the after, you'd be like, wow, you know, and that's the stuff that really makes that look that much better. And people want to come to town, maybe, maybe a pool. Uh, you know, something on a project, obviously that has to go to a vote of the population. But just really wanting people to come and live here because we will have jobs. If the people are here, then businesses will come to where the people are. Absolutely. Yep. The jobs. Because right now, you come in and you're going to put a, uh, come here and build a business and want 50 people to work there. Good luck. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think. I think we're sometimes we want the business to come, but we're putting the cart before the horse. Yeah. We need we need a place to where the people want to come to work. They got to be able to live in the community because they don't want to be 30 miles away and drive all the time at the gas prices that we've seen. So mm-hmm. that's what I think is very important for our community is is focusing on that, focusing on the road construction. You know, just keeping keeping up with the maintenance, but also really having that project about how can we look at our city and really develop the housing and, and, and stuff like that. So. Ditto. Yeah, I pray. Uh, that's, that's, why, that's why I get paid that's, for. Exactly. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why I said the end. Uh, no, I want to echo basically everything that, that these these individuals have, have, have said, right? I think, you know, collaboration and communication are a couple of the really big ones that, that I think all of us are looking for. Um, obviously, from a project standpoint, you know, I think both of all three of these gentlemen have hit the sort of the high priority ones and right to go with housing is the daycare side of it which you know if people are going to come and live here you obviously have families and little kids and you need to look at that right and and the county is doing some things and and that's great but at the same point you need that opportunity Mm -hmm. so okay well, sure, perfect. this is your shot. Uh, you, you got about two minutes left. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, that never happens to us. No, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. I think um, the process was great. I really um, I appreciate the thoroughness that the city has been going through. Whoever you choose, I think that process of the thoroughness that you're going through to select a candidate is, is great. It's both good for the city and for the applicant to see you're going to be dealing with. So appreciate right. that. So thank you. And we've all been very impressed with all the candidates we had today. I think we've been extremely happy with the firm we hired to assist us. But yes, we're, we're extremely pleased with the three that we were able to bring in to do our final interviews. And and thank you for your time and coming to spend the day with us. Absolutely. And I, yeah, thanks. You know, yeah, thank you. You, you don't, you didn't have to come here today. You know, you, <laughs> you, 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 choo- you chose to apply and you took an interest in our city, and I, on behalf of everybody here, I think I, uh, I want to thank you for taking a sincere interest in our community. So, yeah. I definitely can feel the passion that you have for the community. Um, so, thank you. 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 Thank you.
So keep that keep that up because it's very evident how passionate the council is with the community. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. And Patrick will be in contact with you, I think, by sometime later on this yeah. afternoon, this evening, and just let you know what, what we've come up with. So. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Thank you, dear. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Holly. Nice to meet you. Yes, take care.